Linking and appending are two ways you can import objects from another file into your scene. By doing so, you can create an object in one file and then use it in many different projects. Let's first take a look at a very simple example. Here we have a new scene. For this video, my default scene will be empty just so I don't have to delete the default objects to clear up the space over and over again. Now I will create something we can try to import into another file. To make it go fast, I will just add a Suzanne and give it a simple material. Now when we have our finished object, save the file and name it something so you will remember what it holds, like Suzanne. From now on I will refer to this as the original file, since it holds the original object. And the empty file where we try the importing, I will refer to as the import file. This will always be displayed in the corner, so you won't get lost when I jump between the two. Now, let's try to import this Suzanne into another file. Open a new file. We are now in the import file as you can see in the corner. We have two different options when importing objects, linking and appending. Let's try appending first. Select append in the menu and pick the file we just created. Inside the blend file we can see a lot of different folders. This is all the different types of data that can be imported. We want to import an object, so select object and then Suzanne. Now we have a Suzanne in the center of the scene. When we append an object, it is copied to the file, so it is just like she was created here in the first place. We can do whatever we want with it, like change the shape or materials. This is a completely new copy of Suzanne, so the file we imported it from is not needed at all anymore. We could even delete it if we wanted to. Now let's try linking instead. Open a new file and select link in the menu. It remembers the last folder we picked, so just select Suzanne again. A Suzanne appears in the center of the scene again, but this time it has a blue edge, indicating that it has been linked. If we try to change it, we can't do anything at all. We can't move it, enter edit mode to change the shape, or change the material. This is because this Suzanne is linked from another file. What we see here is the exact same monkey as in the original file, so if we want to change the monkey, we have to go there. However, having to go back to the original file just to place the object in the scene seems very cumbersome and limiting, so thankfully it is not necessary. We can use what is called proxies to be able to change linked objects without having to change the original file. You can see proxies as a step in between, allowing us to create a difference compared to the file we reference. With Suzanne selected, make it a proxy. The blue edge disappears and the object gets renamed Suzanne proxy in the outliner. It looks like any other object here in the outliner, but if we expand it, we can see that it holds a linked Suzanne since there is an arrow next to it. This icon tells you that something is linked. Now when we have a proxy, I can move the object around or make it really big. The monkey is still grabbed from the other file, but the proxy allows us to adjust it. However, the proxy is pretty limited, so we still have to change the original if we want to change something like the material or the shape. So, let's try changing the original to see how it works. Jump back to the Suzanne file and change her a bit. I will just give her a really big mouth. When you are done, save the file again. If we go back to the import file, she still looks the same. This is because the object is only loaded the first time the file is opened. If we want this Suzanne to get updated to the new version, we have to reload the file. To be able to reload a file, we have to save it first. I will name it import. Then open the same file again by simply clicking revert. This discards any unsaved changes, so make sure you just saved. And now the Suzanne has been updated. So, when should you append and when should you link? Both have different advantages and are useful in different cases. 
The big advantage of appending is that you can modify the object any way you want. It becomes a completely new object and the file you imported it from doesn't matter anymore. You can change the shape, material or anything you like, just as if the object had been in the file all along. The big advantage of linking is that you only need to change the object in one file and it will automatically be updated in every file that uses that object. Imagine if you have a character you're using in different scenes and you realize it would look better with brown hair. If you appended, you would have to make that change in every single file that uses the character. But if you link, you only have to change it once, in the original file. Another big advantage is that you save hard drive space. When you append, the object is copied to the new file. So if I append a character, I get two characters saved on the hard drive, taking double the amount of space. If I link instead, I could have the character in thousands of different files and it would barely take any more space. Now you know the basics of what linking and appending is and their advantages and disadvantages. So, now I thought we would go through all the objects we created during the course of this DVD and see how we can change them so they become easy to either link or append in another file. Let's start with the ladder. Here is the ladder file we had at the end of the ladder tutorial. So, let's try to import it into another file. Open a new file, select link in the menu, and pick the ladder file. If we now select object like we did with Suzanne, we can see our first problem. The ladder actually consists of several different objects. So which should we choose? All of them? Just some? To make this easier, we can use something called groups. Using groups, all objects needed will be collected into one thing, so you always get exactly what you need when you import. Let's go back to the object file to add a group. First of all we need to activate the viewport selection we deactivated earlier. We want both the armature and the ladder to be included in this group, so select those and group them. Rename the group ladder and save the file. If we now try to link the ladder again, we don't have to pick in the list of objects. Instead, we can select group. Here it is only one thing to select, ladder, making it very easy to know what to pick. The ladder appears in the center of the scene. Notice how there is no blue edge around it and that there seems to be an empty in the center. A great benefit of using groups is that we can actually move the ladder around right away without having to add a proxy. We can just grab it, place it, or scale it like normal. So even if what you want to import only consists of a single object, like the Suzanne, consider creating a group for it. As you can see, the top and bottom are also included, even though we never added those to the group. This is because Blender knows that they are needed and therefore include them as well automatically. In the outliner, you can see that except for the ladder group, we also have the top and bottom with the arrows showing that they are linked. However, seeing those two in the outliner just makes things more cluttered. If we know that something is going to be needed, it is better to just add that to the group as well so everything falls under the group object. So go back to the object file and add the top and bottom to the same group. Save the file. And when linking the ladder this time, we only have one object in the outliner. However, the top and bottom are still visible inside the scene, which we don't want. This is because they are actually visible in the object file as well, they are just on a different layer. Keeping them in another layer for hiding doesn't work when importing objects, so instead we can simply hide their visibility both in the viewport and in renders. And now after reloading, the ladder looks perfect in the import file. Now, how do we pose the ladder? By doing the same thing as we did for Suzanne earlier, by making a proxy. This time we are greeted with a list of choices. Since this group actually holds many different objects, we have to pick which object it is we want to make a proxy for. 
It is the armature we want to be able to change, so select the armature. Now we get an extra object named ladder proxy, as you can see in the outliner. With the proxy selected, we can enter pose mode and pose the ladder just like before. We can even open the properties panel and change the shape of the ladder. Great! Here we have a big advantage of keeping all controls within the same object. We only need to add one proxy to be able to control everything about the ladder. If these controls had been spread out over multiple objects, we would have to make a proxy for each object. Looking in the outliner again, you might notice that we can still select the original group object and move it around, moving the entire ladder. This is not something we want to do when we have an armature we can pose it with instead. So I am simply going to disable the viewport selection for it, so the proxy is the only thing we can select. We don't need to touch the original group anymore anyway, since we don't need to make any more proxies. And now the ladder works perfectly as a linked object. But how about if we append it? Let's try that. Open a new file, and append the ladder group instead. Now we get three objects in the outliner again, the armature and the top and bottom. This is because when we append objects, they are all copied to the scene and are now just like normal objects. Since the top and bottom was not parented to the armature in the object file, they end up not parented to the armature here as well. If we want everything to be collected under one object, even when we append, we need to make sure that all objects in the group are parented to the same object. In this case, we can parent the top and bottom to the armature without problem, not destroying any functionality. To easily parent something that is not visible in the viewport, we can actually click and drag them in the outliner and drop them on the armature, selecting parent to object. And now when we append the ladder again, only one object is added to the outliner, keeping it clean. Great! Now, what if we want to add more ladders to the same scene? When we append, this is super easy. Just append the same ladder as many times as you want, and they will appear in the outliner as armature.001.002, etc. They will all continue to work, and they can all be posed and changed differently. But how about linking? Can we link the same object several times? Let's try to see. Open a new file, and link the ladder once. Create a proxy for the armature and use it to move the ladder to the side so we get some free space in the center. Then link the same ladder again. Instead of another ladder appearing in the center, it looks like nothing happened. However, if we look in the outliner, we can see that another object named ladder.001 has been added. The reason we can't see it is because it has the same location as the first ladder. If we move the group, we can see it. Now, let's try posing the first ladder using the proxy. It still looks like there is only one ladder in the scene. This is because the two ladders are remaining identical. So, can't we just add another proxy to the armature of the other ladder to be able to post them independently? Let's try it. With the ladder.001 selected, make a proxy. If I now try to pose it, things starts to behave very weirdly. The two armatures conflict with each other. The ladder doesn't know which one it should listen to. Unfortunately, it is clear that we can't link the same rig multiple times. If we just want static objects, linking the same group several times works well, since we can place them in the scene by moving the entire group. But if we want to be able to pose an armature, we can't. This is a clear advantage for appending, where the same rigged object can be added as many times as you want. However, there is kind of a way to get around it, making it work for linking as well, and that is to simply duplicate the object file. It doesn't matter if the files are exact copies, as long as they are different files, we can link one ladder from each file and they both continue to work. Let's try it. When I'm in the object file, I will simply save a copy and name it ladder2. 
Then we can link the ladder once from the ladder file and once from the ladder2 file. And now we can post them differently. However, don't you kind of lose the benefit of linking if you duplicate the files in the first place? Not really. Even though we now have two identical ladders, these two ladders can be used in any number of files at the same time. And they are still pretty easy to make adjustments to. Let's try making the ladders blue. Just make it blue in the original file. And save it. Then save a copy again. Replacing ladder 2. A bit more work, but still very fast. And now we have two blue ladders after reloading. Now we are done with the ladder, so let's move on to the analog clock. From now on I will activate the viewport selection and visibility for everything again before the video even starts. That way we can work with all objects in the scene and you don't have to see me do it over and over again. Just like with the ladder, we want to include everything that is needed in a group. In this case it is every object, so select everything and create a group. I will name it analog clock. I'll quickly hide the time empty again. This is all we need to do to make the linking work perfectly. Link the clock group. And then add a proxy to the clock empty, the object that holds all of our controls. Also always deactivate the viewport selection for the group object. We don't want to move that anymore. And now we can move the clock around as we want. Change the time in the properties panel. and play the animation. If we try to append the clock instead, the time empty becomes a separate object in the outliner. It is not a big problem, but it is cluttering up for no reason. To get rid of it, we need to parent it to the clock empty so it falls under the clock empty like the rest of the objects. Simply drag and drop the time empty onto the clock empty so it becomes parented. However, now when I move the clock, the time changes. This is because the hand drivers uses world space. Since we don't want moving its parent to affect the time, we will switch to local space for the drivers of the three hands. Now we can move the clock without affecting the time. And after that, of course deactivate the viewport selection again. And now the clock will work perfectly for appending as well. Let's move on to the digital clock. Start by selecting everything and add it to a group. Let's try to link the clock now to see what happens. It might not be immediately apparent, but if we look in the outliner, you can see that we have an extra scene here, with an arrow. The scene the clock comes from has been linked as well. This is because, as I said earlier, Blender automatically links everything that is needed for the object to work. So why is the scene needed? It is because it is used in the time driver. When we created it, we referenced the FPS property of the scene so it would update automatically if we changed the frame rate of the scene. And since the FPS value of that scene is used in the driver, the scene gets linked. This means that changing the FPS control here in this scene won't work. The clock is listening to the FPS of the linked scene. It is clear that this attempt to automate didn't work well. Having an FPS value from another scene is not making things easier at all. So I am actually going to change the clock so it has its own FPS property instead, just like the analog clock. Add an FPS property to the clock empty and name it underscore scene FPS. Set the default value to 30, the minimum to 1 and the maximum to 120. 
since that is the highest frame rate Blender supports. I named it underscore just to force the order of the properties. I want it to be last next to the speed property. Then change the FPS variable in the time driver so it points to the new custom property instead. Remove the base both from the expression and as a variable. Just hide the time empty. And now when we try linking again, it works great, with no extra scenes added. But instead, we of course have to select the FPS value manually here in the properties panel. Finally, let's focus on appending the clock. For that one, we of course need to deactivate the viewport selection again. This will be the last time I mention it, so I don't have to repeat myself so much. Just always return the visibility and viewport selection back to the way we set it in the main tutorial. Since everything is already parented to the clock empty, the appending will work great right away, with only one object showing up in the outliner. Now, let's move on to the simple domino. Since you don't really need to see it again, I have already created a group that holds every object in the domino and saved the file. So, let's try to link it to see how it looks. If we press play, it falls like it should. Now, it is the curve we want to be able to change, so add a proxy, selecting the curve, which is named domino. Let's try posing it. However, even though edit mode is listed here, we can't select it. Unfortunately, we can't modify the shape of objects in edit mode when they are linked. So, linking this line of domino does not work. We need edit mode to be able to pose it. If we stick to appending instead, we get the same full control as we originally do. But do we have any options? Yes, kind of, and that is to modify the shape of the curve using an armature instead. It is only edit mode we can't access, we can still change things through armatures and modifiers. So, what we can do is to add 5 bones, one for each point along the curve. That way, we can pose the curve by moving the bones, instead of relying on edit mode. This comes with a big downside, and that is that we can't add more points to the curve. So for absolute flexibility, appending is still the best choice, because then we can access edit mode. However, I thought we would try this anyway, just so you can see how it is done. Start by adding an armature. Now, let's simply place one bone at each point along the curve. Since the points are not on even units right now, it is easiest to just select a point, move the 3D cursor there, and then add the bone. With the bones added, it is time to make them affect the curve. We will do this using hook modifiers. This works by binding one point to each bone. So select the curve and add 5 empty hook modifiers. We will take one point at a time. Select the first point in the viewport and enter the first bone in the first hook modifier. Click reset and then assign. Reset makes sure that we don't get any offset between the bone and the point, and Assign binds the selected point. And now if we test it in post mode, the curve point sticks to the bone when I move it around. Great. Let's do it for the rest of them. Select the second point, add the second bone in the modifier, and Reset and Assign. Select the third point, add the third bone, and reset and assign. The fourth point, fourth bone, reset and assign. And finally the fifth point, fifth bone, reset and assign. 
and now the curve can be posed by moving the bones. Remember to add the new armature to the same group so it is included when we link the domino. And now let's try to link it again. Add a proxy to the armature. And now we can pose it as we want. However, the custom property controls are still added to the actual curve, so we need to add a proxy to that as well to be able to access them. And now another curve appears in the center, the proxy. We don't want to move it around, only select it to access the controls, so lock its transform properties. And now the domino works well when linked. So, let's see what it looks like appended. It works well, except for the mess of objects we get in the outliner. We need to give them a common parent, like usual. We can use our new armature for this. Add a new bone, and name it parent. Move it to the side so it is easy to select. Then parent the objects in the top of the hierarchy to that single bone. This gives us only one thing in the outliner, making the domino ready to be appended as well. Then simply move the parent bone to another bone layer so we don't have to see it. And we are done. Let's move on to the spider. Here is a spider I have already linked. All I have done is to add the armature, the spider and the ground to the same group. After adding a proxy to the armature, we can now move it around. However, if you import the spider, it is very likely you will want it to walk on something else than this default ground. Just like the curve in the domino, we need to enter edit mode to change that shape, which we can't do when we link. We could try to add some kind of controls to change the shape of the ground, but in my opinion, for the spider, it really is the best to just append it. That way, you can easily make it walk on anything with just a couple of clicks. Let me show you what I mean by taking a look at a file I have prepared. Here I have an uneven ground, all made of a bunch of different objects. So, let's try add a spider that walks on it. First append the spider. Now to make it walk on this new terrain, we can simply snap the vertices of the ground control onto it. First hide the spider so it is not in the way when we work on the ground. Let's delete the displacement modifier and apply the subdivision so we get some more vertices in edit mode. Now in edit mode, I will delete the vertices that go outside of the new terrain since they won't be needed anyway. Now it is time to snap this ground onto the terrain. Still in top view, activate snapping to nearest face. Also activate project individual elements so all the vertices moves independently. Then just move the entire mesh along C and click to accept. And now they have snapped to the nearest surface, creating a kind of collision mesh. Just hide the ground control and unhide the spider, and now it walks on the ground like it should. Currently the spider is appended, so it won't listen to anything at all from the original file. But just because you appended an object, it doesn't mean that you can't link anything. When we appended the spider, everything got copied here so we could adjust it, like the shape of the ground. But let's say I would still like if the body of the spider looked identical to the original file. We can do this by just linking the spider mesh. Select link in the menu and navigate to the mesh data. I have not renamed these so they still have their default names, but I happen to know that the spider mesh is called cylinder, so I picked that. Now it looks like nothing has happened. The spider body is still the same. This is because we only linked the mesh data, not an entire object. If we want this body to be linked, we can simply switch the mesh data in the object data tab. Pick the cylinder with an L in front of it instead, indicating that it is linked. And now the mesh data is linked. The actual object is still local, but if we expand it in the outliner, we can see that it holds linked mesh data. And if we expand that further, we can see that the materials gets linked as well, since the mesh data uses those materials. So, if we now change the spider mesh in any way in the original file, it will be updated here as well. Let's quickly try it. 
Give the spider a dark body. And a sharp back. To make sure the deformation stays correct, we can parent with automatic weights again. And if we now save the file, and then revert the import file, we get the new look of the spider, while we can still adjust the ground as we want. Great. Now onto the advanced domino. Just like with the simple domino, we need to be able to pose a curve to place it. So this means that we can change the path of the domino when we link it. Unlike the simple domino, I am not going to create anything to enable us to adjust the curve shape using an armature instead. As I said earlier, we can still not create extra points for the curve that way. And since this is the advanced domino, I want that full control. So I will simply only append this one, since it gives the maximum power. To make it ready to be appended, we only need to do the usual. I have already added everything to a group and made sure the visibility and viewport selection is like we said it in the main tutorial. Everything already has a common parent, not cluttering up the outliner, so we don't have to do anything else. And now on to the last object, the glass. Here is what the glass looks like when I have linked it. All I did was to add everything to a group. Let's add a proxy to the armature so we can pose it. Posing the glass works great, but it becomes a bit hard to see the armature, so activate X-Ray for the proxy. Now everything works great, except for the transparency of the glass. There is none, so the surface becomes very hard to see. The easiest solution to this is to simply set the glass object's maximum draw type to wire, so we can see through it. It is not as pretty, but at least it will work. You need to make this change for the other two glasses as well, if you want to use them. So far we have only created one group to import everything needed, but groups are also great for creating different versions of the same object, where different things are included in different versions. Let's try this out by letting the user pick between three different kinds of fluids when they import. First copy the liquid, and rename it milk. We can move it to the second layer so it's not in the way. Make the material single user, and change the color to white. Then duplicate the liquid again, rename it coffee, and move it to the third layer. Make the material single user, and change the color to a dark brown. Now we have the three different liquids, so now we just need to create two more groups. First I will make sure so everything is visible, so I can select everything. Then I will deselect the water and coffee, so only the milk is selected of the three liquids. Create a group, and name it glass of milk. Then keep the selection, but switch from the milk to the coffee, and group again. Name this one glass of coffee. Since we copied the milk and coffee from the liquid object, they are also part of the glass of water group, so we need to remove them from there. And now when we try linking, we have three different groups to choose from, a glass of water, milk or coffee. And depending on which we pick, only the correct liquid is added to the scene. Great. One final note. When we created the glass, we told Blender to update an extra time on frame changes. To make this continue working when we link, we have to activate the extra data update for the proxy as well. This concludes the tutorial on linking and appending. Using linking and appending, you can easily start using what you create in different projects everywhere. Thanks for watching.